Christopher. My dear boy, how are you? In the pin. <laughs> well, as you can see, India's not been treating me too badly. It must be 20 years. You still look like a mischievous schoolboy. What's the secret, eh? Indian magic. Must be pretty potent stuff. Perhaps I could try it. <laughs> Parched after your journey. Fancy a chotepic? Is that something long and couldn't leave me to this? Saeed, don't chotepic, Jaisi Khan. Oh, don't they have magic in Africa, too? Oh, no, 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 not that sort. African magic lies underground. Ah, yes, I got your letter. All true, is it? Every word. Splendid. <laughs> is that your wife? Yes. Beautiful woman. How old was she when she died? 26. Ever thought of marrying again? No. Now, look, about this scheme of yours, I still don't understand why you need me. Well, I haven't got the resources. Not for something as big as this. Yes, but, I mean, if it's such a cast-iron investment, I mean, why not go to the bank? I want you to have a share in my good fortune. You see, I've never forgotten our school days, crew, when you took a friendless new boy under your wing, invited him to stay with your people during the holidays. And now I've got a chance to repay you for your kindness. Sure you don't want me to lend you the money? Oh, no, I'm quite sure. I want you to have a share in the profits, which, according to the geologist's report, should be beyond the dreams of avarice. All right. There you are. What's this? A banker's draft for 100,000. That um, was the sum you mentioned in your letter. But I said that was half the development cost. I, I didn't expect. Are you sure you can afford it? I can't afford to lose it. But stocks and shares bore me. I'd much rather invest in an old friend whose judgment I trust. Well, thank you. Two old friends, then. Old friend. By the time I return, I expect to hear you've made me as rich as Croesus. Well, if not, may your goddess strike me down. <laughs> you going on leave, then? Yes, I'm, I'm taking my little soldier on a tour of Europe. Your little soldier? My daughter, Sarah. Ah. Yes, she's going to boarding school. May I ask how your client happened to hear of us, Mr. Barrett? Through Lady Melodies. I understand both her daughters were educated here. <laughs> Such sweet girls. Both of them presented at court, you know. My client will be delighted to hear it. Then I may inform Captain Crewe you will be expecting his daughter early in the new year. Captain Crewe? Don't be under any misapprehension, madam. My client may be of junior rank, but I'll wager he's wealthier than all those other officers put together. Crewe? I seem to remember from the obituary column, an industrialist of that name, uh, the Hampshire gent... The captain is Sir Gerald's son and the sole beneficiary of his considerable fortune. Indeed. Here is a note drawn on his London bank. If you would be good enough to fill in the amount of the first term's fees. As far as the girl's comfort is concerned, money is no object. She is to have her own sitting room, her own pony and carriage, and her own maid. Her own maid? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Barrow. That is quite impossible. It would only cause resentment among my other yes. girls. I'm sorry, too. It seems I must look elsewhere. But, of course, if that is the captain's wish, then she shall have her maid. A French maid. He was very insistent on that point. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Money, no object, sister. Think of that. Yes, Amelia. Perhaps it's time we raised our fees. No, 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 Mrs. Sahib. You have to leave all your books. Oh, Anna, please. You'll be such a comfort to me when I'm all alone in that... that place. Surrounded by fog, rain and cold. Thinking of you and Papa. Mrs. Sahib, you'll be far too busy to think about us. Learning how to be a lady. You too. <laughs> oh, I don't want to learn how to be a lady. I want to stay here with you. What's this? Mutiny? 
You know how we deal with mutineers, don't you? Yes, Papa. Up against the wall, then. Want a blindfold? No, thank you. I do not fear death. Very well, then. Firing party. Present. Aim. Oh, excuse me, Captain Sahib. What is it? I think perhaps the prisoner has a last request. Yes, I have. I want to take my books to England. No, you won't need books when you're dead. Oh, please, Papa. I'm not play acting now. Oh, I'll buy you books. Lots of them. French, German, Italian, all first editions. But aren't first editions expensive? No, oh, hang the expense. We're going to be very, very rich. We're rich already. Yes, and now we are going to be millionaires. I have just bought a half share in a diamond mine. A diamond mine? Yes, you see? You can leave all your books and clothes behind. I'll buy you a whole new wardrobe in Europe and a whole new library. Oh, Papa. I shall miss you, though. But books and clothes in the world won't pick up for that. I shall miss you terribly. Promise me one thing, little soldier. What? Well, um, don't spend all your time reading. The girls of your age should be enjoying themselves. Playing with dolls or something. Oh, I'm too old for dolls. Except, perhaps... Go on. A very special one. A friend I can talk to when you're not there. All right, then. We'll go shopping in London. See if we can find a very special one. Oh, I'm sure we shall find her. She'll be there waiting for us. And her name will be Emily. <laughs> She's what you want. Oh, yes, this is Emily, all right. She recognized me before I saw her. Doesn't seem very talkative. She doesn't talk, she thinks. And only I know what she's thinking. Dear Captain Crewe, what a pleasure it is to meet you at last. And this must be Sarah. What a beautiful child. It will be a privilege to have charge of her. I'm not beautiful, Miss Minchin. Oh, you don't think so? No, I believe I'm rather ugly. <laughs> well, at least she's not vain. <laughs> Do come in. Sure. Please be seated. Mm. I have uh, hired a French maid, as you requested. Would you care to see her references? Oh, no, no, no. That won't be necessary. I'm sure she'll do very well. I've also hired a pony and carriage. And Sarah will have the prettiest rooms in the house. They are on the first floor with a lovely view of the square. Thank you, Miss Minchin. Emily thanks you too. And Emily? My doll. She'll be my intimate friend when Pa has gone. <laughs> What an adorable creature she is, to be sure. Yes, Miss Minchin. You'll um, take good care of my little soldier for me, won't you? She's all I have in the world. Set your mind at rest, Captain. My sister and I cherish these girls as if they were our own daughters. Would you care to see your rooms, my dear? Yes, please. Mariette is looking forward to meeting you. 
Your papa and I have a few things to discuss, after which he will come and take his leave of you. Henrietta, will you show Miss Crewe her room, please? Yes, ma'am. Maria? This is Miss Crewe. Oh, voilà la petite. Thank you, Henriette. Viens, ma chérie. Viens. Enchantée de faire votre connaissance, mademoiselle. So you speak French? My mother was French. I never knew her, but I think that's why I found it so easy to learn. Oh, c'est très bien, cela. I'm called Mariette. Yes, I know. <laughs> I've been unpacking your clothes. What wonderful trimmings and fine petticoats. Not even the Marquise de Souillac had such a trousseau. Would you like me to help you? Oh, no, ma petite. Ladies do not unpack their own suitcases. That is my task. Oh, what a lovely room. Don't you think so, Emily? We should be happy here. Good. Thank you. I, um, I shouldn't like Emily to be homesick. This is your papa? Yes. Then I will leave you alone together. Excuse me, monsieur. Well, little soldier, I'm afraid the time has come. Yes. Try not to be lonely, Papa. You too. Oh, I shall be all right. As you say, I'll soon make new friends. Such a stare. You look as if you're learning me by heart. Inside my heart. And you're inside mine too. You'll be inside it even when you're 3,000 miles away. Never forget that, little soldier. You'd better go. You don't want me to see you cry, do you? Mustn't cry in front of the men. Frightfully bad form. I happened to pass her room while her nerve was hanging up. I counted at least seven. Ridiculous. Who does she think she is? And at least ten pairs of shoes. All absolutely tiny. She must have very small feet. Oh, don't be so naive, Jessie. It's the way they're made. Any clever shoemaker can make big feet look small. Have you seen her yet? From a distance. And she isn't even pretty. No, but she's got an interesting face. What's interesting about it? Her eyes, I think. They seem to go right through you, as if, well, as if she was summing you up. You girls have no business to be summing anyone up. It's us who should be summing her up. She's a 
centre of attention. Silk stockings, too. And she has got small feet. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jessie. I'm a sick and tired of hearing about her feet. It's the most boring subject in the world. Good morning, young ladies. First of all, I wish to introduce to you your new companion. Sarah, come here. This is Sarah Crewe, who has come to us from a very great distance. From India, in fact. India. What? India! As soon as lessons are over, you must make each other's acquaintance. Now, Sarah, let us talk about your curriculum. Do you know what a curriculum is? Yes, Miss Minchin. Oh. I assume that since your papa wished me to engage a French maid, he wishes you to study the French language. I think he asked you to engage her because he thought it would please me. Please you? I'm afraid you've been a very spoiled little girl, haven't you? You mustn't imagine that everything is done for your pleasure. I don't imagine that. Well pleasure. brought up, young ladies. Do not interrupt, Sarah. My impression is that your papa wishes you to learn French, and so that is what you will do. But Monsieur Dufarge will be here directly. Take this book of elementary grammar and study it until he arrives. But I can no buts. Sit down, please. At once. And don't sulk. It is not at all becoming. I wasn't sulking. You were looking cross, which is much the same thing. You must learn to do as you are told, with good grace. Bonjour, mes enfants. Asseyez-vous, asseyez-vous. Oh, madame, you have a new pupil for me, I see. Yes, Monsieur Dufage. Stand up, Sarah. Her father is very anxious she should begin to learn your beautiful language, but she seems to have taken rather a childish prejudice against it. Hmm, indeed, mademoiselle. Then I hope I may be able to change your opinion. Monsieur Dufage, je regrette que madame ait mal compris. Je pense que votre langue est la plus belle du monde. Ma mère était française et c'est pour ça que papa m'a appris le vocabulaire de base qu'on connaît très bien. There seems to have been a No, mademoiselle. Bon, allons. Bon. Bonjour, mon soli blanchet. Avez. Avez-vous le bon pain? Non, 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 mademoiselle. Not le bon pain. Le bon pain. Hmm? Répétez. Le bon pain. Please, please, young ladies. Such an accent is not a matter of amusement. We can't help it, Monsieur de Barge. She's so stupid. Shh. Nevertheless, we must persevere. Uh, translate, please, mademoiselle. Bonjour, Monsieur le Boulanger. Uh, good day, Mr... Butcher. Baker. Avez-vous le bon pain? Have you the good... pain? <laughs> Silence. How many times must I tell you le pain, the bread, hmm? Before we meet again, you will write it out 100 times. Yes, monsieur. Très bien, sir. It is 11 o'clock. The lesson is terminated. <laughs> Au revoir, mes enfants.
What's your name? Ermengard. Mine's Sarah. Yes. I'm interested in names, so I looked mine up in a book. Did you know the first Sarah was Abraham's wife? Originally, she was called Sarai, the quarrelsome. But it was changed by divine degree to Sarah, the princess. Is it true that you have a playroom all to yourself? Yes. Would you like to see it? Oh, may I? Of course. Come on. Should be too late for lunch and all. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Oh, may I? Not before you've been introduced. Wouldn't be proper. Emily, this is Ermengarde. Ermengarde, Emily. Papa gave her to me as a going away present. Do you love your father, Ermengard? More than anyone else in the world? Not really. I I'd like to, but he thinks I'm stupid. And if people don't like you, you can't really love them, can you? Well, I love mine, but we're going to be apart for so long. Have a good cry, then. I won't tell. Soldiers don't cry. The Papa's a soldier, you see, and he taught me to bear my wounds bravely. I cried the whole of my first term, even though I wasn't a bit homesick. Silly, wasn't it? Expect it was shock. Yes. You soon get over it, though, don't you? Once you've made some friends. I haven't got any friends. No friends? How long have you been here? A year. But that's terrible. I'm stupid, you see. And fat. People don't want friends like that. I do. You, you really mean that? You're not just saying it because you feel sorry for me. It's myself I feel sorry for. I need a friend, too. But you're so clever and I'm so boring. I don't find you at all boring. And I'll tell you what, Ermengarde. If you'll keep Emily and me company when we're lonely, we'll help you with your lessons. Is it a bargain? It's a bargain. Captain, Zoe. I have been so worried about you. We were expecting you yesterday. Carriage lost a wheel. The driver and I had to spend last night by the roadside with no protection from the storm. I believe I caught a chill. Well, then you must get warm. I've lit a fire in your study room. Thank you, Anna. And the Missy Sahib? She'll be all right. Fine school. Come on, Lelo. The house has been so quiet without her. Yes. Yes, to tell you the truth, I've been dreading these first few days back home. You English. I'll never understand. What? Why, you have to send your children away. Wait. Teaches them to stand on their own two feet. Yes, but childhood is so short. When she returns, she will be a young woman. For heaven's sake, Andrew, I'm miserable enough without you nagging at me. Well, let's agree not to... Something the matter, Captain Saeed? Uh, a touch of fever, I think. My, my head's swimming. I will bring you a hot drink. Let a chant d'amour, Christ to gay, to rattle. Excuse me, miss. Any shoes to clean? Oh, yes. Bien, ça 
the door, Miss, in the morning. Thank you. Who is that girl? Oh, it's only Becky, the scurry maid. But she looks so thin and tired. Yes, they do not treat her well downstairs. Ellie, it must be awful to be poor. Oh, do not concern yourself, petite mademoiselle. <laughs> Fortunately, it is a condition that you will never, ever experience. <laughs> My dear crew, I don't know how to soften the terrible news I have to tell, so I must come straight out with it. The geologist was wrong. There are no diamonds, and we have both lost everything. Oh, my God. My own ring means nothing to me, but when I think of the injury I've done to you, old fellow, I want to die. Several times I've taken out my revolver and put it to my head, but that is the coward's way. My punishment must be to live on, to face my shame and your anger. Consequently, as soon as I can raise the fare, I will come to India and beg your forgiveness. Your humble servant, for you will no longer consider me a friend. Tom Carras. My poor darling. Oh, dear little one. It's just luck, though, isn't it? I mean, that little girl, we're about the same age. It's just luck that I'm not her and she isn't me. Not luck. It is the will of God. I mean, God wants some people to be poor. Perhaps. But why? As a trial. To strengthen their characters. Annie. Bonne nuit, ma chérie. Bonne nuit, Mariette. Hey, bon rêve. 